So hello everyone and welcome to uh, another version of Exploring Creativity. Um, this week we've been looking at the work of Sohaila Sokanvari, who has an, um, an exhibition called Rebel Rebel at the Barbican Art Gallery, The Curve, uh, in London, the United Kingdom. And so I'm going to demonstrate to you how to make egg tempera, which is a type of paint uh, that she used on vellum for the paintings. The exhibition is an installation with holograms, sculptures, uh, music, um, video and also very small, beautiful paintings. Um, so you will need an egg, uh, you will need some powdered pigment. I'm using um, non-toxic kinds. So I'm using alizarin crimson, lemon yellow and ultramarine. Um, I'm going to use these paints in combination with gouache and watercolour. So I've only got a few colours, well, three colours. Um, I've got a little bit of white vinegar and a little bit of water um, and um, some spoons, uh, a bowl, uh, a jar and a um, palette that's got quite deep wells in it. Uh, so in a minute I will start uh, and I will show you how to make egg tempera paint. So if you have ever made a cake um, or uh, um, something that requires just the yolk of an egg, you should know how to separate the yolk from the white. And if you don't know, I will demonstrate how to do that um, now. And if you use a clean vessel to catch your egg white, you can make a egg white scrambled egg or egg white omelette uh, later if you keep it separate from all the um, art materials. So you just crack the egg and then gently open the egg and allow the white to just fall into the bowl. And then Gently tip the yolk into your hand and then just sort of wiggle it just a little bit till um, the till most of the white as much of the white as possible has come off. You have to do this very gently because it will otherwise it will just to prevent it from breaking. And then if you can see this sort of fibrousy bit, uh, what we want to do, what we're aiming for, is to... Joanna, my egg's broken already into yolk, so shall I start with another one? Yeah, if the yolk breaks, just, just grab another one and start again. That's fine. Um, so... So what you want to try and do is get your other vessel ready. So this vessel is where my yolk is going to go in. And I'm going to try and hold the egg by this viscous. Oh, hang on, it's come off. <laughs> so let's get rid of that. There's there's like a stack around surrounding the um the inner yolk and what you want to do is sort of hold on to that sometimes you can from the area where that fibrousy bit is but if you can't it doesn't matter just make a hole into the yolk and sort of hold on to the yolk while the inner bit of the yolk falls out and sort of squeeze the fibrousy bit and you should find that you have like a membrane bit left over in your hand uh, that was the the part of the egg that was holding the yolk the, the sort of inner stuff of the yolk 
that wants to keep separate you don't want that in your paint because it's a bit too fibrousy so that can go in the white bowl with the egg white um, and then you want to go and wash your hands uh, because raw egg uh, we don't want to get that everywhere so I'm just going to pause while I go and wash my hands right so there is the egg white which you don't need so I'm going to set that aside and have that for my lunch <laughs> later I'll cook it and then I have this egg yolk so the next thing you need to do is add it's an equal amount of water so if you hold your um, jar or whatever you've got your uh, yolk in up at an angle you'll be able to see like the edge of it how much is there you you can match that so pour in some water to the same level and then the other thing you want to add is a little tiny bit of white vinegar i've got this quite thick white vinegar so i'm just going to put a tiny bit on a spoon you only really need a drop so I'm just going to put a little drop there. And stir it. It smells like hollandaise sauce. <laughs> um, stir it all up. And mix it well together. So it's nice and smooth. And then, so I've got these three pigments. So what I'm going to do is put a spoonful of mixture into three other trays. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna do more because I'll do I might mix some colours together. I might mix a green and a purple. So I'm actually gonna do six. I'll do all six. And then I'll just add a little bit more where and we've got one left. Okay. And I'm just going to come down a little bit. I'm just going to move the mic out of the way because it's making a shadow. Okay, so. So then all you need to do next is put a little bit of um, powder pigment into your yolk. So I'm going to, because I'm going to do green and purple by mixing blue and yellow and blue and red. Uh, so I'm going to put three bits of blue in there. Give my spoon a wipe so that it's clean. Then I'm going to do, I'm going to have one yellow and then mix some yellow with some blue to make green. And then I'm going to have, oh yeah, I need to make orange as well, don't I? So one red, whoops, and then that for the orange so i need to go back to the yellow uh, oh and then i need to do the purple oh my goodness right so then i'm going to add some yellow to some red so that makes our orange and then i need to add some red to our blue so that will make our purple so we have six colors okay so Uh, I might pause while I do this, but I'll just show you the first one. You're just mixing it very gently. It's a bit like cooking. You're making icing or something like that. You just want to very gently mix it in and squash the lumps with the, if there's any kind of big lumps of powder, squash them with the spoon. 
and just keep mixing until it's thoroughly mixed in. So I'm going to pause while I do that. So um, I don't know if you can see very well, but it's now gone smooth after a lot of stirring. Um, the paint has gone all smooth and it's quite runny. Uh, I have an issue with the colour because it's supposed to be orange, but it's a very dark orange, very red orange. So I'm going to use uh, a different spoon that's clean and I'm going to just add some more yellow. You can adjust the colour this way. And the other thing I was doing while I was stirring it is um, if any escapes, you can just use a brush to redirect it back in <laughs> to your uh, well. And um, you could even use a brush to mix once it's gone past a certain um, mixiness, mixedness or whatever, then uh, using a brush might speed up the process of mixing in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I think I need more yellow. So add in some more yellow. This red is very dominant. Um, And obviously the more the more pigment you add, the thicker it gets. So you might want to adjust by adding a little bit more water if it goes too thick. We're gonna have a fairly dark orange, but that's okay. So, and then I'm just gonna go around, obviously cleaning my spoon in between and mixing the other wells um, <clears throat> till they're all mixed. So I'm going to pause while I do that. So on mixing my green, I realized it's not lemon yellow that I'm using, it's Indian yellow, uh, which is why we're getting an olivey green rather than a limey green because uh, Indian yellow is biased towards red uh, and red and green are opposite colours, complementary colours, but when you mix them together they produce the neutral colours like greys and browns and um, so if you have a colour that's biased towards the complementary colour that you're mixing, it will come out duller. It won't be a bright colour. Anyway, so I'm nearly finished mixing. It takes a long time, this mixing, uh, you might find. So I've got my ultramarine blue here, I've got my alizarin crimson, my Indian yellow, my green and my orange. And next I'm going to be mixing my purple. Okay, so I've got all my colours mixed. The purple's come out very dark purple. Um, everything else is pretty good. Um, and I'm going to just take a little bit of each one um, and pop it onto another palette so that I can um, mix water in uh, to thin them when I'm when I start using them. So they're a bit like um, the consistency, almost the consistency of watercolours you get in a tube. Um, some of them are runnier, depends on how much pigment you add. If you want them thicker, you can add more pigment. And then you the way you use them is pretty much the same as when you're using the watercolours in a tube. So I will demonstrate in just a minute. So now I've got my extra palette with more colours on. I'm going to be able to add some, you know, lift out, add some water. I'm going to get another palette. 
out as well so I can um, use that to mix and also um, going to mix some might put some gouache out into that and also some watercolors so I'm going to pause while I get my source material and then I'll get started showing you how to apply the paint so I have as my source material here uh, the model Joanna McCormick <laughs> not me it's my namesake who is a, a supermodel in the 50s before the idea of supermodels was invented so this is a lovely picture of her and a lovely William Morris um, wallpaper pattern design so I'm going to use these as inspiration uh, for working in egg tempera and I'm going to start in the middle of my smooth watercolour paper arches on a block so I'm just going to use a um, round brush number six and what I'm going to do is use the purple first and my brush is just damp and I'm just going to draw with the brush the shape of the face I'm going to work quite quickly and quite loosely. And so hopefully what you'll notice when you're using the egg tempera is it has this lovely sort of um, translucent quality and this quite shiny uh quality to it So I'm literally, I'm sort of using my paintbrush as a pencil, really, in the same way as I would use a pencil. And I'm, I'm just sketching out the shapes. So you'll find that egg temper is similar to watercolour in that it does have, if you add more water, it goes nice and translucent and goes lighter. And also create a little bit of sort of blurring with it if, if you add water to it. I'm not going for realism here. It's going to be fairly sort of maybe slightly cartoonish.
So um, the egg tempera paint, it dries quite quickly. It has a nice flow to it. And I'll show you what happens when you try and mix, when you mix wet into wet on the page. So if I mix some purple, it doesn't flow in the same way as watercolour. It doesn't blur in the same way. It's a bit more solid. I mean, it does blur a bit, kind of does, but not anything like as much. And I'll, I'll show you that with watercolour in a minute. Um, so you can see where I've got the egg tempera. If I do a similar thing, say along the hat, um, if I use, I've got this lemon yellow watercolour and I'm mixing lots of water into it, get a nice wash like watery wash. Um, so if I paint that across, like so, and then if I add, I'm going to actually use um, gouache, but I just want to show you what happens when you add wet into wet. Because here you see it's not blurring that much, it's blurring a bit. And not that much. I'm just going to put a little bit more wet down in there. And then if I get some wet white gouache, so I'm mixing it in again to create a nice wash. This is white gouache. If I drop that into the watercolour, hopefully you can see how much more it blurs and blends it really it does this it does quite a different thing a blurry blendy thing um and so now i might mix a bit of brown using my um egg tempera so if i have blue and purple mix them together and add some orange to it That's how you, that's one way of getting a, a brown. This is quite a nice warm brown. I'm going to put this in the hair. Yeah. And then I've got all these kind of, oh yeah, butterflies and things across the top of the hat. So um, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to just sort of sketch in the top of the hat, the shape of the top of the hat. And then just sketch in some butterfly shapes using quite a big brush. And I'm going to add sort of lots of colours onto it afterwards. So what is that three? I'm kind of changing, you know, changing the reality of the picture a little bit, kind of messing around with it. Put these beautiful nails in with this big brush. Okay, and then that butterfly's got a nice orangey. Can add a little bit more. Whoops. Can I add a little bit more yellow into my? So I'm making a paler orange. And egg temper is just—it's a nice um, got a nice flow to it, and a nice sort of transparent translucent 
um, characteristic and then it's doing this interesting thing where it's the watercolour is sort of blurring into it sort of moving into it I really like that effect so sometimes these happy accidents can happen which create some really interesting effects Okay, so now I'm going to have a look at the, um, actually what I'm going to do first is um, fresh yellow from my original, so I've still got my original colours that I didn't put out on the little palette, those ones have got a bit contaminated, so I'm going to pick up some real yellow uh, and put it on the top of the hat, I want this to blur up quite a lot. But obviously it's not like watercolour, it won't blur up loads. It's just blur up a little bit. I'm kind of losing the shape of the butterflies and add them back when it's dry. I just want to get this sort of marbly effect. Um, so She's got this lovely green dress on, which I'm kind of pop that in. Okay, and now I'm going to bring up my William Morris reference, and I'm going to go for the red, and I'm going to just draw in some of the lines of the pattern. So kind of thinking about patterning I'm just going to do like outlines and actually I'm going to switch up to a thinner brush I think we go back to the number six brush So at this point I'm going to pause because I'm just going to, I'm sorry I didn't see that, I'm just going to sketch in the outlines of um, some of these shapes of uh, the patterns into the background. Okay, so I've done some of the background and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a really big brush. And I'm just going to see what happens when I put, if I put a very watery wash down, it's got a bit of colour that was already on my brush, because um, I just want to mess it up quite a lot. Um, this is very different to the artist's work, uh, Sohaila Sokhanvani, uh, hers is very precise and incredibly detailed and in sharp focus, I'm, I'm deliberately doing it a bit differently, uh, allowing the paint to run around and making it quite messy. And you'll see, so the um, working in this medium, there's something really lovely about making your own paints to start with, you know, mixing the pigment in and you can decide what consistency you want and how much pigment you use and everything um, and it's also nice uh, it's quite flowy um, medium quite forgiving So it's a nice medium to work with and you can play around with the consistency, uh, how much you put down on the brush. I'm just going to drop in a bit of white gouache into the wet areas just to see what happens. And then 
I'm going to stop. If you wanted to do more, or if I wanted to do more, um, I might go over it again in more detail. I might actually, which I might do now, kind of put a bit of color on the face. So it's not just white paper everywhere. Um, oh, so that's happened. <laughs> okay, so then I might need to do some lifting out um, around the nose with a piece of cloth. It's not very yellow. So um, there you have what happens when you use egg tempera and making the paint yourself. Hope you've enjoyed today.